welcome you this morning to our live stream broadcast of uh, for Mother's Day here at Livingston Baptist Church. And we are so thankful that you have joined us this morning. And uh, if you know someone that may be looking for a church that may uh, be, have a special Mother's Day service today, we invite you to ask them to join us. And uh, we'll be having our service here in just a few moments. We're going to be in the book of Exodus this morning and uh, studying a lady by the name of Jochebed, Mo Moses' mother. And my, what an example that she is to us today. And so I encourage you just to take your Bibles and have them ready, and we'll be going through that here very soon. But I do want to wish all of our mothers a happy Mother's Day. And uh, we have just a few of them here today. And, and uh, of course, we're still, uh, things are quite a bit unusual. I can't ever remember a Mother's Day where we're faced as a nation like we are. And uh, used, we're used to all being together. And, uh, but uh, you just pray that one of these days we'll get back together here real soon. But we miss our mothers. We miss our families that are all uh, spread about. And uh, we just certainly hope that the Lord will just give us a great Mother's Day. And I hope that you've been able to talk to your mother this morning if she's still living. But you know what? Sometimes uh, uh, we, and as time progresses on, uh, it's a natural thing for us to lose our parents and go on to heaven. And uh, there's a poem that goes like this. It's entitled Mother, Home, and Heaven. And uh, those are three of the sweetest words uh, that really we can think about as it comes to life. And uh, there's a little poem written about that. And I'd like to read that for you right now. It says, The sounds that fall on mortal ear as dewdrops pure at even that soothe the breast or start a tear are mother, home, and heaven. A mother, sweetest name on earth, we lisp it on the knee and idolize its sacred worth in manhood's infancy. A home, that paradise below of sunshine and of flowers where hallowed joys perennial flow by calm sequestered bowers. And heaven, the port of endless peace, the haven of the soul, when life's corroding cares shall cease like sweeping waves to roll. O oh, weep not then, though cruel time, the chain of love has riven to every link in yonder clime, reunion shall be given. O oh, fall they not on mortal ear as dewdrops pure at even, to soothe the breast or start a tear, a mother home in heaven. And I think a very appropriate song for us to sing right now at this time is In the Sweet By and By. And uh, we're going to have Rick come and lead us in that song wherever you're at. Uh, we do invite you to come and, uh, and sing along with us as Rick sings. And if you're here, it's 586 this morning. No, it's 564. 564, excuse me. Thank you. And so uh, well, let's sing this together. Little Rick.
we are looking forward to that day when we will all be together again. And uh, thank you so much, Brother Rick, as we as you sung that song. I would like to go over some special prayer requests right now, and then right after we pray, we're going to ask uh, Brother Freddie Grayson to come and sing a song for us. That's a good song for Mother's Day. And uh, let me go over some prayer requests first. I do would like to uh, have everyone pray for the family of Johnny Smith. He's a man in our community. He passed away this week, and we're asking pleased to pray for the family there, as well as a young man, 19 years of age, uh, had a head-on collision this past week. His name is Jordan Benson, and uh, Jordan passed away this past week as well. Also, Brother Robert Holden, he's a man in our church. He is uh, going to the oncologist on the 4th of June to try to discover a treatment plan for his leukemia and his lymphoma. And so please pray for him if you would. Edward Davis, this is uh, Candace Lewis's dad. He is having surgery this week, as well as Patrick Oxendine. Uh, both of these uh, are having surgery upcoming. Debbie Bracey is still in quite a bit of pain, and we're asking you please to pray for her. Um, I was able to talk to... Uh, uh, Miss Peggy Taylor this morning and uh, Miss Louise Howell. Uh, she has gone to the hospital and has left the hospital. They thought it may be a, sort of an infection, but they feel like that she is getting some dementia as well. And she's now over at the uh, nursing home and uh, be there at least a couple of weeks. And they say they will not release her to come home uh, unless there's some 24-hour care, so there's a lot of decisions that need to be made there, so you pray for them if you would. Lori Gentry, we've been praying for. If you've been joining us in our services, you have heard that name before, but uh, Lori is doing uh, much better, still not out of the woods yet, but still needs our prayers, so please pray for her. Another praise report this morning is that L.V. Harrelson, this lady is in, our, in a nursing home in, the in her 90s, and she has fully recovered from the COVID-19 virus. And so we're thankful for that. That's right. You can just praise the Lord for that. God is good. And we're certainly thankful for that. We also uh, continue to pray for uh, Bonnie King and uh, her arm pain. And then Doris Hausman, this is her mother. She is also in her 90s. And uh, she is facing more eye surgery. And so please pray for her. Uh, Mary Little and... Uh, Richard Tyson is having some uh, is having some uh, knee replacement surgery coming up. But Mary Little is having a healing on one of her feet that needs to be uh, taken care of. So pray for her. And then uh, also, uh, my mother is expecting eye surgery this month as well. And so, if you could remember her, if you would. Well, uh, we're going to ask the Lord's blessing on these. And uh, if you would just join us in prayer together. And then we're going to have Brother Freddie to come up and to uh, sh uh, share a very special song for Mother's Day. Heavenly Father, I do want to thank you for the privilege to be here today. Thank you for the privilege to speak to uh, whoever's listening in today. I have no idea, but God, you do, and I'm thankful you know everything. And Lord, this is a very, very special day. And we are so grateful for our mothers. And uh, thank you for my mother. And uh, thank you for how she raised me. And uh, we just do pray that you would just uh, bless her today. I thank you also for my wife and how that she is the mother of, of my children, two children. And I praise the Lord for her and Lord for every mother that Lord there that is that is represented by those that are watching today. We thank you for them and we pray that you would just bless them in a very real way. I pray that you'll help them to know that they are loved. And dear God, we pray as we're challenged this morning from your word, I pray that you would help us, dear God, to have our hearts open and receptive. And Lord, just be willing to receive the instruction as we hear it from your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. All right, Brother Freddie Grayson is gonna come and sing now. A song written by Squire Parsons, and I'm sure it'll be a blessing to you. Hello, Mama. I just 
to be answered, let me say, don't give up. Don't give up. And uh, one of the most valuable possessions that one can have on this earth is a praying mother. And uh, where would we be? Where would any of us be today without someone that's prayed for us? And for many of us, it has been mom that has prayed for us. And uh, only time will tell when we get to heaven when we get to heaven and we find out what God has done through the prayers of a mother. And uh, I tell you, we're gonna, we have a lot to be thankful for. And if you haven't told your mom, uh, thank you for some of those things or happy Mother's Day today, I encourage you to do that. Well, we are in Exodus chapter one today. Exodus chapter number one. And uh, you turn there, we'll get to the passage in just a few moments. I believe that a mother is a great value to God. You know, uh, society today has tried 
it's best to minimize and to demean and to make, to look inferior the role of a mother. And may I say even more so that of a Christian mother. Uh, but I would like to say that the role of a mother is a far greater value than sometimes we care to think. And uh, mothers are the most influential people in the world. And today society has put in the minds of women that in order to be influential, uh, they've got to climb the corporate ladder. That's the, what they have been fed and they think as they can climb as high as they can get and be great leaders and CEOs and managers of great corporations. And that's what it takes to be a great woman. My friend, I want to say this morning that uh, mothers is the most influential position and they are amongst the most influential people in the world. Yeah. And um, I believe that for someone to to uh, actually minimize that or demean motherhood is doing a great injustice to her family and also to society. Uh, uh, someone has described motherhood like this, and I like this. The most influential position in the nation today is held by a woman. She enforces the law. She practices medicine. She teaches she handles the nation's food, administers its drugs, practices emergency first aid, and tests for all the spiritual, physical, and mental ills of the American family. That's mother. All right. That's a good definition of mother. Uh, I believe, honestly, as you think about this, man literally places his life, think about this, and the lives of his children in the hands of a woman. And the influence of a mother has no limit. She can literally be the key to success or failure in the lives of her children. That doesn't mean that, that, she, that she alone is the one that's responsible. That's not what I'm saying. But she definitely can be a key to a person's success or failure. I have no idea who said this, but it's what a statement it is. Someone has said, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. That's an amazing statement. And uh, Billy Sunday said this. He said, if you want to hurt the devil, don't hit him with a crutch. Hit him with the cradle. <laughs> and I believe there's a lot of truth to that as well. Ladies, I cannot emphasize enough to this morning the importance of being a godly mother. And uh, I want to just try to encourage us in that way this morning. And I love the song, Brother Freddie sung. And uh, sometimes it doesn't pay off right away, but you just planting the seeds and you be the godly mother that God's called you to be. And I promise you that, that God will reward your effort. So Lord Shaftesbury said this. He says, give me a generation of Christian mothers and I will undertake to change the face of English society in 12 years. He had a lot of confidence in mothers. Uh, history abounds with stories about how mother's influence has been greatly used of God. There was a preacher's conference that was held one time, and, and uh, just to show the influence of mothers, they uh, began to ask questions and had the preachers respond. <laughs> and uh, during this conference, uh, they were asked what human instrument was the greatest influence in their conversion and out of 120 preachers, a hundred of them said that they owed their conversation to the influence, excuse me, not conversation, but conversion to the influence of their mother. I wonder how many people today are watching that can say that their salvation was greatly influenced by their mother. <coughs> We've got some people here this morning, a few of them, and uh, I know this morning there are people here today that say, you know what, my mom had a great influence on me being saved and me coming to Christ. Um, one businessman uh, said this, he says, when I was a child, my mother asked me never to use tobacco and I've never touched it, never to gamble, and I do not know one card from another, never to drink. And strong drink has never passed my lips. 
I was but seven years old when she made that request of me and soon after she died. And whatever success I have had, I owe it all to my mother. Amen. I would like for us this morning to look at a Bible character and a woman in the Bible who had great influence over her children. And uh, this also had great influence over a nation. And I want us to be encouraged this morning by the testimony of a, la of a, of a lady by the name of Jochebed, the mother of Moses. Her name, Jochebed, means Jehovah is her glory. Uh, in fact, Jochebed is the very first person in the Bible to have her name compounded with Jehovah. Part of her name is, comes from the word Jehovah. And I believe you will see that she lived up to her name and her motivation was for the glory of God. And you're going to see this happen today. If you were to list, I believe that the most influential women in the Bible who were great mothers, I believe if you did a good study on all of it, you would have to include Jochebed in your list. The Bible says that she had three children. And let me tell you who her children were. And uh, they were greatly used of God. The first one, in fact, the oldest of the three was a lady or girl by the name of Miriam. Now, right here in our story, Miriam is 10 years of age, but God used Miriam. If you read your Bible, you can know that God used Miriam in a very great way to influence the nation of Israel. The second <clears throat> child she had was a little boy by the name of Aaron. Aaron is three years old at this time in our story, but he would become the, excuse me, the first high priest and the founder of the Aaronic priesthood for the nation of Israel. And then the last one that we know of that she had was a little boy by the name of Moses. And he, <coughs> excuse me, would become one of the greatest national leaders the world has ever known. You know what? I, I don't know of any greater desire that a person can have or can enter the mind of a father or parent than to wish that their children just be used of God. I believe it was John that said this in the epistle of John way back in the back part of the Bible. He, he said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. There's no greater joy that can come to the heart and the life of a mother to know that their children are, have given their lives to serve the Lord. Uh, God has a plan. Not only did he have a plan for Miriam and for Aaron and for Moses, but I want to say this morning, God has a plan for your children too. And if you are here and perhaps your mother's past, I want to say this, God has a plan for you. He has a plan for every single person. You say, well, preacher, I, I've messed up. I've done. You know what? I'm so glad that God is a God of forgiveness. And uh, where would we be? Where would we be if God uh, had not forgiven all of us? Uh, somebody said the statement, we at our best are but clay. And I'm so thankful God can take clay and he can make something beautiful out of it. And uh, I will encourage us this morning. Now, Exodus chapter number one, let's read just a little bit about Jochebed this morning. Exodus chapter number one, we're going to be in the last verse of the chapter and we're going to go reading into chapter two and read down to verse number three. <clears throat> Exodus 1, 22, <clears throat> the Bible says, and Pharaoh charged all his people saying, every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river. And every daughter ye shall save alive. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took, a wife, took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. 
now that story continues, but we're just going to stop there this morning, and I want to make just a few observations here. Let me say this to begin with. Jochebed's baby Moses was born during very troublesome and turbulent times. To begin with, uh, Jochebed was a slave. She worked in the fields or perhaps even in the brickyards of <clears throat> Egypt. Life was hard. Life was difficult for her, for all of the Egyptians, not only <clears throat> for the Israelites. On top of that, she had a family to take care of. She had a husband, a 10-year-old little girl, a three-year-old little boy, and now she was expecting again. But for fear that the Hebrews would overpopulate the nation of Egypt and to take over Egypt, that was the fear, Pharaoh made a decision that every son that was to be born, that son would be, was to be taken and thrown into the river and then all the girls could be saved alive. Well, Moses was born during this time. So Moses was uh, coming into a world, think about this, he was coming into a world literally with the sentence of death hanging over his head just because of the fact that he was a male child. All these were turbulent times. Can you imagine this morning the anxiety of Moses' parents, especially that of Jochebed, as she went through day after day you know, back then, there were no ultrasounds to determine that, hey, you're going to have a baby girl or you're going to have a baby boy. They just didn't know. Uh, they had to wait until the day of delivery to find out. Well, can you imagine what Jochebed must have thought as she was just thinking, I wonder who I'm going to have. I wonder if she wished in her heart, Lord, uh, Lord, it'd be a whole lot easier if I had just a, a baby girl. Uh, I, I don't know the thoughts that were just going through in her mind, but within her heart, uh, there was great joy that she was going to have a child. Yet at the same time, there was great sorrow, wondering if as soon as her little child was born, that it would be snatched away and thrown to the crocodiles in the Nile River. Uh, there is no doubt when that day came, that her heart was filled with great anxiety, wondering what would take place. But I want us to think about this. During that pregnancy, Jochebed committed her life to something. During that time, she had committed herself that regardless of whether she had a baby girl or a baby boy, she had determined and she had purposed for this time in her life that God's calling on her life was to save her child from destruction. That was her purpose. She was determined that that's what God had for her. And let me say this morning, both the mothers, and by the way, fathers as well, I know that you'll agree with me today that we're also living in some trouble sometimes, perhaps not as bad or maybe not in, in some different ways as as Egypt and Jochebed in her day. But let me say this, the main, the main emphasis and purpose that Jochebed faced honestly is the same emphasis and, and concern that every mother ought to have for her children as well today. And the most important question any mother can ask in regard to the welfare of her children is this. How can I keep my children from destruction? That is the most important question that a mother has. My, what a question. May I tell you this morning that every child who is born into this old world is born with very similar circumstances like that of Moses. Every child, think about it, whether male or female, is born with the sentence of death hanging over their heads. They are born with that. You say, preacher, what do you mean? Well, the Bible says in Romans 5, 12, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that all Escape. 
to keep her child from destruction. We're recording by way of a cell phone. <laughs> I, couldn't get to I don't cell know phone. if you heard what we just heard or not, but our cell phone that we're recording on all of a sudden started ringing. <laughs> and um, I don't know who it was, but maybe they'll just wait and call back later. So let me just repeat what I just said, if you don't mind. And... Uh, and uh, <coughs> I think God just might, might have really want me just to repeat what I just said. <laughs> so let me repeat it, okay? Let me say this. What I'm saying is very this morning, every child who's born in this world is born with very similar circumstances to that of Moses. And I think this is where the phone started ringing. So listen carefully. You know what? Every child, I don't care who they are, is born with the sentence of death on their heads. Amen. The Bible tells us, wherefore is by one man sin entered the world. That was by Adam, he sinned. And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Now that was a very important statement that God just wanted me to repeat for you this morning. Amen. God wants us to know that every person, every child that enters the world enters with the sentence of death on their head. You know what? Uh, every child that enters this world is faced with a challenge. How are they going to escape eternal death and separation from God? <clears throat> but I want to say this morning that although that is true, wonderfully blessed is that child who has a mother that makes it her calling to keep her child from destruction. You know what children are faced with so much today? Not only must they be saved from eternal destruction, but can I say this? They must also be saved from the snares of the world and of the devil. You know, uh, the temptations that children must face today are a constant concern and an anxiety <clears throat> upon... <clears throat> Parents and mothers today. Mothers ask themselves the question, uh, will my child survive through the dangers of today's world? I, I, I would like to give you this morning just some, some lessons that we can get from Jochebed this morning, some character qualities that are found in her life that can help us and aid us in our endeavors to do what we can to save our children from destruction. Uh, each one of these things are of tremendous importance this morning. So let me begin by saying this. Number one, she was a mother of faith. She was a mother of faith. Although it's not mentioned and her name is not mentioned by name, we do find her referenced in the great chapter of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And I want you to listen to verse number 23, if you would, where we'll find her, her actually uh, uh, implied in this verse. It says, by faith, Moses. Doesn't say it was Moses' faith. It says, by faith, Moses. Now, whose faith was it? I believe it was the faith of his parents. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. The first two words in this passage in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 says, by faith. You know what? The greatest need of any mother is that she is a woman of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through what? Faith. Through faith. Yeah. You know what? For a child to be saved from eternal death, he or she must have faith imparted to them. Now, it's up to them whether they receive it or not. 
But it has to be a very concerted effort by the mother to impart faith to her children. And a mother, if she is going to save her child from eternal destruction, she must have a very strong passion in her soul and in her heart to impart faith to the child. And how can she do that if she does not have faith herself? She who wants her child to be saved must first of all be saved herself. You know what the greatest treasure to be won in the world, think about this, are the souls of our children. The greatest treasure in the world is not how much money we have in the bank. The greatest treasure we can have is something that we can take with us when we leave this world. And it's the souls of our children. You know what? We need mothers today who value the souls of their children more than they value the dollar, more than they value silver, and those who will value eternity more than they value time here on this earth and just the pleasures of the world that they want to live for themselves. You know what I'm saying this morning here is this. God just give us more mothers who have faith and it's their desire to impart faith to their children. That was Jochebed. Number two, I want to say this. Not only was she a woman of faith, number two, Jochebed hid the child. She hid the child. If you look at verse number two in our text, the Bible says, And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that, she, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. She hid him. Now, God gave Jochebed some tremendous wisdom to keep a newborn baby a secret for three months from Egyptian soldiers. Now, you know what? It's one thing to hide something that is an inanimate object and to keep it quiet. Uh, you know, it's another thing to hide a living human being and especially a child. Amen. And a child that you have no idea when it's going to start crying, when it's going to start fussing. She had to hide this child for three months. The Bible says she did it successfully for three long months. And for three months, she was able to hide him. And it must have been extremely difficult trying to cover the cries of the little baby where no one could hear. Everything was against her, but listen, she would not give up. And I can imagine Jacobed got very little sleep during those three months as she was diligent and using some very uh, 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 crafty measures in hiding her little baby. You know, it's important that I say this this morning. <clears throat> Those who were not hid were taken and destroyed. Mm -hmm. right. Please let that sink into our hearts this morning. <clears throat> there were many little babies in Egypt who were taken to the Nile River and thrown to the crocodiles. Mm -hmm. There were some, no doubt, that tried to hide them and were unsuccessful. And uh, the soldiers would find them and then cast them into the river there were many who were torn from their mother's arms and slain before their very eyes. There were many mothers who lost their sons because uh, they were not wise enough to hide them. Let me say this this morning, dear mother, if you want to save your little children, you must learn the example of Jochebed and learn to hide your children from the enemy. Now, do I need to remind us this morning that we have an enemy who wants our children? We do. Do I need to remind us that there is an enemy that's real? In fact, the Bible calls him as a lion. He walks about seeking whom he may devour. And let me say this, it doesn't matter whose child you are. The devil will camp out on anybody's front doorstep regardless of who you are and seek to destroy our children. It doesn't matter who you are. There are some things, let me say this, there are some things and some people 
and some influences that we ought to try our best to hide our children from. Sin is enticing. Sin is attractive. And sin is that, that is the nature of sin. And if we're going to save our children from destruction, we must learn to hide them from it. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3, a wise man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. The Bible also says that a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Proverbs 29, 15. You know, why, why should we hide our children? Let me tell you why we should. I know there's some people that have this philosophy of life just to let the children raise themselves. I understand that. Uh, let them do what they want to do. But I'm going to say this morning, the, the reason we ought to hide our children is because the devil wants them and because they are not smart enough to know it. Right. And all the children sees is the bait. They don't see the, ch the trap. And I want to say many right. times that, that, that young people will, will rebel against that. And I want to just encourage teenagers, especially this morning, if you're listening to me, that if you have a mother that sets up fences and guidelines in your life, uh, you would be wise to thank God for such a mother. Amen. Thank God for them. I know you can make the choice to rebel and go your own way, but I want to say you ought to thank God for a mom that gave you wise counsel to try to hide you from some things. Instead of giving her grief, uh, you need to be thanking God for her. Uh, look at those whose parents did not hide them here in the book of Exodus. Why? You know, they were taken immediately and destroyed. It's a very wise thing. I'm saying this morning, it is a very wise thing to hide your children from the enemy. That's right. Amen. Well, I don't believe in sheltering my kids. All right. You don't believe in sheltering your kids. You have left them open for the enemy. You would be wise to do what Jochebed did. You would be wise not to let your children raise themselves. You'd be wise to do your best to hide them from evil influences. Uh, well, I know it looks like uh, many people, is that they look at it, well, my freedom is being infringed upon. Uh, and uh, it looks like they're having the time of their life. Let me say this. You may have the time of your life at the beginning of that, but my friend, that's just the first chapter of your life. Your last chapter's not been written yet. Mark it down. We need to take wisdom in doing what Jochebed did in hiding her child. Number three, let me say this. She prepared an ark. She prepared an ark. Verse number three, would you look down there? And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. I look at that verse and I'm reminded how that Jochebed knew she was convinced in her heart there was going to come a time when she could no longer hide him. You know what? The time did come when she could no longer hide him. And she did the best that she could. So what would, what, how would she provide for Moses when he got too old to hide? The Bible says she made an ark. She took time. I believe she was very careful. She took all the skill that God could give her. And I could see her now as she goes down to the river brink and she goes down and she cuts down some of the strongest and best stalks that she could find and she takes them home. And after working all day amongst the taskmasters who say, hey, is Jochebed here to work today? And they made her work. And then I, I, I can just see how that she would stay up late at night up into the wee hours of the morning and she takes these, these reeds and she weaves them together to form an ark. 
And then she, once she said, thought that she had, she's got it just like she wants it. The Bible says she pitched it in and out with slime. She's going to make that waterproof. And she takes that, she takes it home and she stays up late at night working on this thing. And, and uh, she wants it to be just perfect because she knows that what she's making, she's going to have to entrust the safekeeping of her son to this ark to take him down the river. And when she knew that she could no longer have her child, she surrounded him with that which would keep him safe. What kind of ark are you preparing for your children today? What are you entrusting the safekeeping of your children to take them down the river of life? When the day comes when you can no longer hide them, what will you entrust to keep them? Will you just turn them loose on the world and just hope for their survival? Jochebed wasn't willing to do that. She thought ahead and she prepared an ark. I want just to give you a few thoughts right here. And you can add a whole lot to this, I'm sure. But these are just some brief things. I want to make mention of some materials that you might want to consider to surround your child with in building an ark for them. Number one is this. The ark is a representation of Jesus Christ. Right. The child Moses was safe in the ark. And because he was in the ark, he was safe from danger. I want to say this. The number one goal of every parent is to see that their child makes it in Christ. Gets to the point where they are, are will that they will trust Jesus Christ as their personal savior. You know what? There's no greater... You know what? So I just want my child to be a good child. You know what? Every mom and every dad wants their child to be good. It needs to go beyond that. We can't... They can't be good on their own. That's right. They need God's help to be good. Amen. And, and by the way, we don't not just want them to be good. We ought to want them to be godly. That's right. Amen. And so we need to, first of all, see that they get in Christ. And then, then let me say this, number two. Make sure that you walk with God. Make sure that you walk with God. You know, I know that a child has his own mind and he can choose his own way. But please don't let him be able to point at mama and daddy and say, well, I've gone the direction I've gone because of them. You know, if they go a different way, help it to be against the example that you set for them. Make sure that you walk with God. Surround them with that knowledge. Uh, be the right example. You know, an example is actually a pattern. You know what? A pattern is not the original. A pattern looks just like the original. You know what? We're to be an example or a pattern of Jesus Christ. Right. We're not Jesus Christ but God help our, our life to be a pattern to the best that we can like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, more is caught than taught. Mm -hmm. It is only when we are in the right relationship with God that we will be the right channel and blessing in the lives of our children. Mm -hmm. uh, do everything you can to uh, bring your child up right. Uh, hey, you know what? The child, children today have a hard enough time making it on their own. Uh, and uh, even those that are brought to church, it's difficult in this world. But I tell you what, bring them to church. Right. Yes. Make sure you bring them to church. You know what? They have a lot more hope if they come to church than if they don't. That's right. Amen. And uh, hey, let me encourage you to do this. Have family altar in your home. That's right. Uh, you say, preacher, what's family altar? Well, some people call it devotions. Uh, you can just talk about, it's where you just get the family around and just talk about God. You might just read a verse of scripture and say, hey, what's this mean to you? And let's talk about this verse. Uh, it, it, it might just be getting, hey, going, reading a Bible story and talking about it. 
It might be just taking a chapter out of the Bible and just going around the room. Everybody read a verse. And you know what? They're not going to remember everything you taught them, but I'll tell you what they will remember. They'll remember that God was important to mama. That's right. Yeah. Amen. God was important to daddy. And by the way, isn't that the most important lesson they can learn? That's right. Amen. To have a living example that mom and daddy love God. And so that's important. But let your child know that God's important to you. Oh my, then, then train them. I mean, number, number three, uh, love your children. Love them. Love them. Uh, your children know if you love them or not. That's right. They know. Number four, train them in the ways of God. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Uh, he, he'll not be able to get away from it when he's older. That's right. uh, you've put it into him when he's young. And uh, he'll get, he may get older, but he'll remember what he was taught as a young child. I'm amazed at Royce Johnson. He's in his 90s. He's my stepfather-in-law. And uh, you go to him today, he can quote, he can quote uh, poems that he learned in grade school. He's, he's amazing. And, and here he is, an older gentleman. Uh, you know what? What I'm trying to say is this. The older we get, we'll remember those things we were taught when we were children. We'll remember them. All right. Number four, number four let me say this. What did Jochebed do? After she had done what she could, the Bible says that she let him go. I'm sure that morning was one of the hardest days of her life. I can't imagine the emotions that she was struggling with. She knew she had to let him go. She knew she couldn't hide him any longer. She knew she had many close calls, too many. And she had to do, she'd done everything that she could. She was a woman of faith. She hid him. She made an ark. And now it was time to let him go. You know what? I'm sure the night before she did, she stayed up all night holding her baby close to her heart. Oh, how she loved him. I mean, that night, I believe, Jochebed, just being just a, I mean, just a, a, a natural mother, she cried many a tear all night. I doubt Jochebed got any sleep that night. I believe, the Bible don't tell us this, but I believe Jochebed stayed up all night because she understood that this was the last time she was going to hold her child, or so she thought. She cried. I believe she prayed. And the dawn came much earlier that morning than it ever had before. I can see her as she kisses that little child and with determination in her heart, she places Moses in that little basket. I believe she did her best. I believe she rocked him to sleep that morning. While he was asleep, she kissed his little cheek and placed him there in the basket and, and determined effort. She walked down to the riverside and placed her child in the flags by the river's brink. But in her heart, she knew she had done all she could. And now by faith, she lets him go. She doesn't know what's going to happen. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, she did it by faith. And she has faith that God is going to take care of her little baby. I believe you probably know the rest of the story. Miriam is appointed by her mother to stand watch over the little basket. Pharaoh's daughter comes to the river to bathe that morning and she sees the basket and she calls for one of her maids to go and retrieve that little ark. It's very unusual. Never seen an ark there. there it made out of reeds before and didn't know what it was and she went and seen it or got it and she saw what was inside of it. The Bible says in verse number six that when she had opened it and saw the child and behold, the child wept. I've said this many times, you know, there's something about a child's cry that gets to the heart of a woman. I mean, uh, men, it doesn't tug at our heartstrings like it tugs at a woman's heartstrings. But the Bible says that when she opened the child, excuse me, opened the basket, the ark, that the little baby cried. 
I believe that it just melted the heart of Pharaoh's daughter when that little child began to cry. I wouldn't be surprised if God sent down an angel just to pinch that child to make it cry. <laughs> just so that that little, that that little baby could cry and just tug at that little, uh, at Pharaoh's daughter's heartstrings. The Bible says that Miriam runs to the princess and says, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And she said, go. And Miriam runs and she gets her own mother. Isn't this amazing? She gets her own mother and returns to the princess and never tells her the prince, the, the, uh, Jochebed was not revealed as the mother to this uh, Pharaoh's daughter. She keeps that a secret. And Jochebed is told to take the child away and nurse it for her. And I will give thee thy wages. Here she is taking care of her own child and getting paid for it. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how God works, isn't it? Amen. You know what? What a story of faith, how that God rewarded Jacobin's faith. You know, what I'm saying this morning is this. After you've done all you can, after you've tried to instill faith into your child. After you've tried to hide your little one from destruction, after you've built an ark, and after you have by faith let the child go, I sincerely believe that God will honor your faith. God will honor your faith. And he will in time, think about this, God ended up giving the child right back to his mother. You know what? You give your child to God. Don't be surprised when God gives the child back to you. You know, I'm thankful that we have this uh, story in the Word of God. There are parents that are at different stages of this story in their own personal life. Right now, there are some maybe listening that have a child that's very young and they are trying to instill faith in their child. Others, they've gotten to the point where, you know what, they're beginning to explore things and they need, they need mama to hide the child. Hide them from evil influences. And right now, that's a challenge to many mothers. There's also other mothers that They've gotten past that and they're already, you know what, they're thinking about preparing an ark because one of these days they realize that they're going to have to let it go. Some mothers have already let their children go and they are trusting that God will keep them safe. You know what, regardless of what stage you are in all of this, I want to say, mothers, your labor is not in vain. Thank God for mothers. And I'm thankful for everyone uh, in this church. And don't, don't just think that it's not as too hard. It, yes, it's hard. Yes, it's difficult. But you know what? Just keep going. Don't throw in the towel. Amen. Keep your faith in God. Right. And let me say this. If you're not hiding your child, hide your child. Start now. If you're not preparing an ark, start preparing one. And as for all of our mothers, our main goal and emphasis is to bring them to Christ. And let me say this, do everything you can to bring them to Christ. Amen. Because that is what's going to help the most. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your love to us this morning. And Lord, I thank you for mothers. What a wonderful day that this is that's been set aside for our whole nation. And thank you for a president that actually thought it important enough to have a day like today and call it Mother's Day. Lord, I pray on days like today that children would 
not just overlooked, but Lord, that they would be sincere and be grateful for the mother that you placed in their life. I understand, Lord, not every mother is going to bring their child up the way they ought to. But Lord, I pray for them. And I pray that you would give them wisdom and to the point where they will come to Christ and be saved. Because, Lord, the only way we can save our nation is if we save our families. And so, Father, I pray for mothers today that may be far away from you. I pray that they would come to you in repentance and see their need for salvation. And then, Lord, I pray that they would then see their need to bring their children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And now, Lord, we pray for your will to be done in our lives. Please bless our mothers today. Please wrap your arms around them and help them to know that you love them and that what they're doing is important. It's the most important job on the face of the earth is raising children. Lord, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day to everyone.